What the heck is spectral frequency display? Why should you even care? I'll tell you now. What's up everybody, David here. I am doing a quick tutorial today going over spectral frequency display. You've probably seen this a bunch of different times, but maybe you don't understand quite what it is. I'm gonna help you kind of get to the bottom of it and some of the simple root features that it has and how it can help you in your finer editing going forward for your podcasts or your radio spots or TV commercials, whatever you're doing. Spectral frequency display is a great way to get some cleaner mixes. Let's get started. So how do I get to spectral frequency display? Well, there's a few different ways. You can click this little icon right up here and it will bring it up. You can hit shift D on your keyboard. It will also bring it up. There's a little drag bar right here. You can drag it up that way. And one third and final way, this little arrow here, click it, it'll open it up. That's how you get to it, all kinds of different ways. So when you open it up, you can see that it is just a heat map of the audio that you have pulled up. So where in our waveform to the right of it, we have a decibel meter showing the volume of the sound. In our spectral frequency display, we have a frequency meter. And now it is just showing different levels of the frequency. Now, the brighter the color in the spectral frequency display, the louder that frequency is in that particular piece of audio in the waveform. So that means softer frequencies, quieter frequencies are going to be purple or black, while some of the louder ones will likely be bright orange or even bright yellow. And all the different in-between ranges of those colors are kind of the harmonics of the sound that you have pulled up in that particular waveform file. So now that we understand that, it actually becomes a whole lot easier to find some of these imperfections in the audio. So you can see right here, here's the audio. College radio's best. So you can see here, it's a fine, it's a clean enough piece of audio, but if you start inspecting, what's all this stuff right here? You can see these little marks here and these little lines that are straight up and down, kind of uh, ugly little mouth clicks. And I know you've probably had to deal with that a lot while you're recording, and we hate those. They sound terrible. They don't add anything usually uh, to the project. Right here, there's one, a perfect example of it. So now that I'm in spectral frequency display, I can really see all these imperfections I may not have noticed to begin with. And if you zoom in, you can see this big red bar down here. What is that? Let's amplify it. That's just ambient background noise, mic rumble. It is just the sound of the studio that you're recording in. In my particular case, this is my studio. This is kind of probably the air conditioner running in the background. So I see that in spectral frequency display. I can do a lot of great things to eliminate it, like turn the volume down. And I know I haven't touched my audio. See how it goes all black when I eliminate the volume? And one of my personal favorite uses for it is helping you find those sibilant frequencies, those nasty S, S, S sounds. The kind of sound piercing and too sharp and uh, some of the voiceover stuff I like to put together. So this is a good way to get in there and just reduce those down, you know, simple, easy ways to do it. Clean up some of your mix. So how do we clean things up while we're in it? Well, in spectral frequency display, there are some new tools that become highlighted here and you're able to select these in the left hand side of your toolbar. If you use Photoshop, you're probably familiar with a lot of them because they're kind of the exact same thing. Adobe. So let's start with our marquee selection tool. So with our marquee selection tool, I can isolate a specific grouping of frequencies. Let's say I want to take everything out from a thousand kilohertz and down. I can take it, hit delete. Now it's gone. Now let's listen. College radios best. So it's a very simple way to eliminate a very specific frequency. If I want to make this sound like I'm on the phone, go to 4,000, take everything out from there. College radios best. Pretty cool stuff, right? Now, there's also the lasso tool. I could take the lasso tool holding my mouse and click a very specific area that I want to remove. And just like in Photoshop, it cleans it up. Eos, Eos. And I can just either delete the volume or delete the whole piece right there. Radios, back. And it takes out that specific grouping of frequency. The paintbrush tool is probably the one I use most commonly. Uh, if I want to get right here and kind of clean up this little click right there. I can do that. Reduce the volume. Let's just reduce it by a little. College rate. And it cleans that up nice and easy. And then there is the spot healing brush tool, which 
It looks like the paintbrush, but when you select over it and you let go of the mouse, it cleans it up for you. And if you need to get a little finer editing in, if you scroll over to the right in our frequency graph here and I roll up with my mouse wheel, it zooms in on that specific grouping of frequencies wherever you have your mouse. If you want to make a specific grouping of frequencies more prevalent than the other, like our lower frequencies, I can hold command on Mac or control on a PC and use my mouse wheel and it'll do it that way too. So it's a little different view, and so really whatever just makes the most sense to you and is the most comfortable to you is the way that you should do it, because this is truthfully just to help you speed up your editing. So if I look at a new piece of audio, let me get rid of this over here, you can see right away in our spectral frequency display, this is full of all kinds of artifacts all throughout it, and what these are, to me, they look like they're mouth clicks. Let's listen. If little or no wind is present, merely back off to slightly deeper water and concentrate on the edge of the sandbars where they meet the channels. Gross, right? Yeah, so we need to get rid of all that stuff. So in spectral frequency display, without having to zoom in on teeny little spots in the waveform view, I can see in spectral frequency right away that these lines, that's harsh. Let me take that out with an auto heal feature. That, that, that. If little or no Let's see what it sounded like before. If little or no, quite a bit different. So spectral frequency display is a super quick, convenient way. And especially when you get the hang of it, it makes everything faster in all of your edits, regardless of what you're putting together. It is an absolute staple in my production studio. And the more you use it, the better you become with it. And uh, trust me, you're not going to know how you lived without it before you got into it. Let me know how it's going for you. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. You're always welcome. Call, text, email. If you know me, let me know what you think. Thanks a lot.